disapproving come in. We are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. A real work is wrought by the Holy Spirit upon the human character and its fruits are seen. Did you hear that? A real work is wrought. Okay? By who? The Holy Spirit. But we have to allow Him. Amen. Amen. We see by our experience that in our own human strength, resolutions and purposes are of no avail. Must we then give up our determined efforts? No. No. Although our experience testifies that we cannot possibly do this work ourselves, help has been laid upon one who is mighty to do it for us. Amen. Mm. Let pride be a base, brothers and sisters, Amen. and most of all our troubles are gone. Amen. Gone. Amen. Today, yesterday for me would have been a day of victory if I didn't have that one little stain in it. That one little ugly piece. If you could wipe that out of yesterday, it was a beautiful day. You hear me? Yes. One who is mighty to do it for us. But the only way we can assure the help of God is to put ourselves wholly in His hands. And trust Him to work for us. As we lay a hold of Him by faith. He does the work. The believer can only trust. As God works, we can work, trusting in Him and doing His will. SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 1080. Beautiful. Beautiful. We're still in Corinthians, so let's go to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 12. I'll try to speed up here a little bit. Beginning in verse 6. This is Paul speaking, brothers and sisters. And I have a heading above verse 6. And it says in my Bible, Paul humbled by a thorn in the flesh. You think, you think Paul was greatly blessed? You think God might have thought that this was something that needed to happen? Oh, yeah. For though I would desire to glory, Paul says, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted <coughs> above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord three times, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. What an attitude. Amen. What a purpose in life. Amen. You think Paul was a victor? Amen. You think Paul knew the way to win? He knew it, and it's in surrender, brothers and sisters. Surrender is the way to victory. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities and reproaches and necessity and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. See that little moment, that blip I had the other day. See, I thought I was strong. And I acted out. But if I would have realized how weak I was, I would have been humbled. And I would have loved that man. You see the difference? Something so little can be so large. It's the little things, brothers and sisters. It's the little things. You ever talk to a rich man? Rich man, they'll always talk about the pennies. They always worry about the pennies rolling away. They trip over a hundred dollar bill, pick up a penny. 
2 Corinthians 13 and 5. What does it say? To examine yourselves. Amen. Whether you be in the faith. Amen. Examine yourselves. <clears throat> Let's turn to Acts. I know some people don't like me using so many books, but this is the way God gave it to me. Acts 5 and 27. Let's begin in verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intended to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give <coughs> repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. And what does this say? God. Whom God hath given to what? Those who obey Him. Them that obey Him. Wow. That's pretty big, huh? What do you reckon that God's saying there? Because I don't know if you're hearing this, but I'm hearing if we are submissive in an agreement with God, and willing to surrender, right? He's willing to give us the Holy Spirit in measures we can't even comprehend. Let it rain. Ooh, let it rain. Glad somebody said it. Thank you, brother. We're not all asleep. We're not all asleep. Chapter 14. I'm going to wrap this up here pretty quick. Chapter 14 of Acts. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Amen. All the time. All the time. 14 and 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, what? Through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Does that say we're going to have a cakewalk? No. It says much tribulation. What do you think these people that the world is going to hate are going to look like? They're going to look like Jesus. What did they do to Jesus? What are they going to do and what are they going to say about God's people? Terrorists. Can you imagine that word being used? I think I can. Terrorists. They're going to call them every kind of name you could possibly imagine. Names I won't even utter up here. I shouldn't utter anyway. I want to read you one little small thing real quick, and I still got two minutes, so I'm not going to keep you guys. I know you're all hungry. <laughs> However, I know I'm going to start a little further up. The media today seeks to discredit those who, according to them, spin conspiracy theories, right? without any foundation in fact, and clearly there are some pretty wild conspiracies out there. Correct? Absolutely, I agree with that. However, there is an invisible conspiracy behind visible world events. And as Adventists, we know that conspiracy involves worship in God's law. Though the prophecies, through the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation, God has enabled us to read the headlines behind the headlines. Amen. We have a purpose, brothers and sisters, and we are going to begin filling that purpose Thursday, right here, at 7 o'clock. And I want you to invite everybody you possibly can, because they need to hear these things. Ellen White was correct when she wrote that when we reach the standard that the Lord would have us to reach, worldlings will regard Seventh-day Adventists as odd, singular, straight-laced, 
extremists. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. What are we hearing today? We're already hearing the utterings. If you're listening, you're already hearing the utterings. That comes from the Review and Herald, January 9th, 1894. Brothers and sisters, time is running out. And I want to let you know that we should not be living on this borrowed time. Jesus has had enough. And when we've had enough, we're going home. Amen. We're going home. Praise the Lord. Our closing song is 158.
finished at the cross. So many people. This is where it ends for them. Right there. It doesn't end there, brothers and sisters. There's a door in heaven that's been shut that no man can open. And there's a door that is open, praise God, that no man can shut. And we can go through that door. And God's personal, holy, holy sanctuary and meet with Him every day. And have the kind of fellowship that our hearts burn for. Because you know, everything this world has to offer falls so flat. One moment, one moment with Jesus is worth a lifetime of pain and suffering. Don't hesitate to give your heart to Him. If you're waiting, don't wait. If you're looking to be baptized, you're looking to give your heart to Jesus, come. Come now. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for your loving kindness. We want to thank you for sending Jesus to make it all right. You have lived the beautiful life that you require, and you give it to us through your Son. We're so thankful that he not only lived it, but he comes back in the Holy Spirit to help us, to lead us, to guide us in this walk. We not only have eternal life, we are rich beyond our wildest dreams. We're so thankful.